Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This is the second of a three video series on the free, yes, I said free, 4NEC2 antenna simulation program. In the last video, I presented some basics regarding the 4NEC2 antenna simulation program. In this video, I'm going to use these basics to model two different antennas. First, a simple dipole antenna, and second, a simple inverted V. In the next video, I will move into a virtual experiment with a whole band 80 meter inverted V antenna. I will provide all of the design files for all of these antennas that we are talking about here in the links in my description below. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified when new videos come out. So let's dive into modeling our two antennas using the free 4NEC2 antenna modeling program. So the first step in doing a modeling of a simple dipole is planning. So you have to answer certain questions. First of all, what frequency is this antenna for? And we have determined that we are gonna make an 80 meter antenna with its center at 3.75 megahertz. And uh, how high is it going to be up off of the ground? Because that does make a difference in how the antenna models and tunes. And while well, we got a couple really nice big tall trees or maybe a couple uh, towers or some such thing. And so our antenna is going to be suspended at 65 foot off of the ground. Then we say, oh, our wire size. Well, we have 10 gauge wire, a nice big spool of 10 gauge copper wire. So we have 10 AWG wire. All right, now, next, we need to find out how long our antenna has to be. The standard equation for determining that is 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz, 3.75, is equal to the number of feet for a half wave dipole end to end, which works out to 124 0.8 feet. So that means that each leg of the dipole end to end is 124.8, each leg is 62.4 feet. There we go. And we have 10 gauge wire. And if you were to look up the diameter of 10 gauge wire on, on the wire tables, you would discover that this is about 0.1 inches in diameter or 0 0.05 inches radius. Now this is going to have to be turned into feet because we're choosing to do everything in feet. And so this comes out to a very small number, 0 0.05 divided by 12. All right, so let's say we decide, first of all, we're going to orient this. Again, we're still in our planning phase we're, before we dive into the program. We, we have our three-dimensional axes here. And we have decided that we are going to orient this along the x-axis, which means that for all Here's our antenna. For the entire length of this antenna, we know that Y is going to equal zero. All right. And we say, well, I'm just going to pull a number out of my, out of my hat here. Let's say I, I'd like to see each segment in my antenna. Remember, it's a wire that's divided into segments. And I just have a feeling like I'd like each segment to be about a foot long. So if the total length is 124.8 feet, that means that I want to have 125 segments. 
This will make each segment of the antenna about a foot long. So we're just about there. If we do 125 segments, that means that we have one segment in the middle where our source is going to be applied. We'll end up with 62 segments over here and 62 segments over here. All right. Now we have all of the information that we need in order to start putting this into the 4NEC2 modeling program. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we've done all of our planning, let's do the modeling. First, we have to open the modeling program for NEC2. Once it is open, we need to set up the initial settings to make sure that we're all doing the same thing. So we're going to go up here to settings and we're going to choose the NEC editor new. Then we're going to go down to characteristic impedance. That's this one here. And we're going to make sure that this is set to 50. Now let's open our editor and we're going to go up to file new. We're going to go to our symbols tab. At the bottom of the symbols tab, you'll see the scaling here. And we're going to choose feet. Then we're going to go to the frequency ground tab here. And we're going to enter our frequency. Our target frequency is 3.75 megahertz. We're going to go under environment here where we get to choose our type of ground. You notice all the things we got free space. So that's somewhere between the earth and the moon. We have fast ground, perfect ground, real ground. We're going to choose real ground. And we're going to choose, oh, they got all kinds of real grounds here, pastoral hills and medium hills and mountainous and fertile land. We're going to choose pastoral hills, rich soil. Now the initial setup is done. We're going to do a file, save as, and we're just going to call this uh, uh, simple dipole. How's that? And we're going to save it. So now that's saved. Now we're going to set up symbols. The nice thing about symbols is that it allows you to adjust dimensions and characteristics of your antenna without having to edit multiple uh, entries in your geometry tab. So under symbols, we can create uh, English type uh, variable names, you might say. Also, symbols allows you to use their optimizer, among other things that really help, like if you need to adjust the, the, uh, the, the frequency of resonance of the antenna, your initial stab at it isn't quite where you want it. Well, you can use the, the optimizer to adjust it. If you've defined the leg length or the, the, the length in, in, um, in, as a symbol, so we're going to define three symbols for this one. I'm going to call it leg length equals 62.4. All right. Next, we're going to de define the height ant H-E-I-G-H-T equals 65. Remember, this is all in feet because that's what you put in here under your scaling. And nice thing about putting the antenna height and feet is you can play with, well, what happens if my antenna is at this height? What happens if it's at this height? And you can play some, uh, play some games with that. And then finally, the uh, wire diameter or the wire radius, I'm going to call it wire rad, is equal to, now we said it's, it's 10 gauge wire, 10 gauge wire, uh, is 0.1 inches in diameter-ish. 
divide that by 12, and you get 0.004 inches in radi- or, or feet in radius. That's the radius. So it's half the diameter. It's 0.05 divided by 12 gives you this number. All right. Let's, let's just save this just because it never hurts to save many times. All right, now geometry. Remember, we're made up of wires with segments. Type, wire. Tag is just a reference. It's just a number. It's, a, um, it's it, like a, a wire number. Uh, it's a reference so that you know exactly which part of the whole it is. So I'm going to say one. Segments. Now, you remember, we wanted, uh, we wanted to have... 125 segments, right? That was part of our planning. One, two, five segments. Now, we're putting this along the uh, x-axis, so y everywhere is going to be zero. And the leg length minus L-E-G, L-E-N-G-T-H, leg length. Y is zero everywhere. Ant, H-E-I-G-H-T. X2 is a positive leg length. Y2 is going to be zero everywhere. And ant, H-E-I-G-H-T. Uh, and then we have wire, R-A-D. Now, Way over here on the right, you have the opportunity to put in a comment, you know, dipole wire, whatever you want to call that. All right, we've 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 put the geometry in. And let's save this again. I'm just really careful to save many times. Now, we need to put in a source. We need to put in some kind of uh, signal source, or we have nothing to to analyze around. So we're going to put in a voltage source. Now this tag here says what wire, what tag number here in your geometry uh, is the one that you are going to be putting the source into. So we're going, we only have one wire, so we're going to put it in one. Now, remember, it's 62 um, segments to the left of center, 62 to the right, and you have the center one. So the centermost one is the 63rd segment. So we're going to stick that at 63. This is the real portion of the source, and we're just going to put in 1 and 0 for imaginary. So there we go. We now have our source in there. And let's save this. Now, believe it or not, we're done. We can look to see how it simulates. And if we made any mistakes in our entries, this is when it will talk to us. So let's click on this little calculator icon over here. Try again. Click on there. There we go. Click on the icon. Now, you have several options here. The two most frequently used, or at least the two that I use the most, far field frequency field pattern. So that's your propagation. That gives you an idea of what it does at the distance. And then frequency sweep is going across a, a section of frequencies and giving you the SWR at each of those frequencies. So for what we're going to do right here, we're going to do frequency sweep. And we're going to define the start frequency and the stop frequency. And then here we have steps. So if we define 0.01, then the first frequency it will analyze the antenna at is 3.5 megahertz. The very next analysis will be done at 3.51, then 3.52, 3.53, all the way up to 4.0. So, we are ready to go. Let's hit generate. And we're not getting any errors yet. 
Sometimes it waits till it's done and then it complains at you. Oh, look at that. So we see over here in this window, the geometry of the antenna. There is our antenna as, as we designed it. And you can grab this, hold down your mouse button and drag it around to, to look at it from various angles. Right here is our SWR across the band. And we're not exactly at 3.75 megahertz. Look at this, see? We're right here. See, now I just clicked on the middle here. So we're about 1.67 to 1 at 3.79 megahertz. Now, if we wanted 3.75 and we really wanted that, we need to change. We need to change this first number here, the leg length, in order to do that. All right, so let's close the editor. And we're going to do that here. We'll go to Calculate, Start Optimizer. And we're going to tell it leg length. We're going to tell it we want you to vary the leg length to give us the best SWR that you can give us at 3.75 megahertz. And we're just going to tell it, go do it. And so now it is stepping through various lengths of antenna to give you the best SWR you can get at the frequency in question. And there we go. We're going to be able to get a 1.6566 to 1 SWR with a leg length of 63.018. Now you can update your NEC file here, what it does is it goes in and changes the value of that, of that variable. Or you can just look at this and say, okay, 63.018, go into your editor, go into your symbols, and let's see what happens. 63.018. All right. Now we save it. We re-frequency sweep it, and we sit back and watch it do its thing. A chunk, a chunk, a chunk, a chunk, a chunk, as it thinks about it. And voila, notice now that the, the best SWR to be had is right here at 3.75 megahertz. Now, the next thing that you might be interested in is the propagation pattern. So we can do that here with the far field pattern. And we generate it. Boom. Now, this is a two-dimensional representation of the pattern. And if we show the indicator, it says that your, your uh, angle of transmission is at 25 degrees. It's way up here in the air. You can kind of see it. It looks like this. But that's not as satisfying as this three-dimensional model that you can get up here. So we click on 3D, and you can see the antenna. Again, like, like this guy over here, you can grab this and move it around and look at your antenna. And I don't know why it always comes up with hide pattern. Well, why on earth would I want to hide the pattern? I choose multicolor because I like pretty colors. And so here is the transmission pattern, the propagation pattern of that antenna at a height of 65 feet. So it does transmit roughly broadside, but you notice that most of that energy is pretty much going up, up in the air here. So there, we now have, we've analyzed the antenna, we've adjusted the length of the legs to give us the best possible SWR at the, uh, at the desired frequency of 3.75. And so now we can move on to the simple inverted V. So let's start our planning phase for a simple inverted V. Well, as with the dipole that we modeled previously, 
we're talking about a frequency of 3.75 megahertz, which is the center of the amateur radio 80 meter band. And from our previous modeling, we know that this means that we have 62.4 feet per leg. From our previous one, we're gonna assume that the apex of this inverted V is at 65 feet. And we're still using 10 gauge wire, which has a diameter of 0.1 inches. And we calculated that out to a radius of 0.004 feet. Well, doing this inverted V is a little more complicated than a dipole, because a dipole, you just have this single wire with an odd number of segments and you plunk a, a um, source at the centermost segment all done. Well, an inverted V is a leg going up, a leg going up in your source at the apex. How, how do you bend, how do you bend that uh, antenna in for an EC2? Well, you really can't. You end up having to put in separate wires for each of the segments. So I'm just going to erase all this so that we can give proper attention to this process. Okay, so you need, you need a wire with at least one segment to put in your source. And then you need a wire for one leg and a wire for the other leg. So what we're going to end up with is a wire for where we're going to insert the source. We're going to end up with a wire for leg one. We're going to end up with a wire for leg two. And now our, our x equals zero runs right down this way. All right. Now this has a finite length. And if we choose that this center section right here is going to be one foot, that means that this point right here is 0 0.5 feet out. This point right here is 0 0.5 feet out. So what we have to do for 4NEC2, remember we have to place this in three-dimensional space. We're already placing this along the x-axis, so we know that y everywhere on this is going to be zero. That makes it simple. We only have two coordinates to be concerned about. We have the z-coordinate, which is the height, and we have the x-coordinate, which is this way. So we need to figure out, well, what is the x and the z coordinate for this point here? Well, by definition, a, a, an ideal inverted V has a, an angle between, if you had a, a real inverted V like this, the angle between these two wires should be 90 degrees. So if we draw a line straight down through here, and if it's 90 degrees from here to here, then this angle on this side between this vertical and this leg here is going to be 45 degrees. And the angle that is in here between this vertical and this leg is going to be 45 degrees. So that means that this angle right here is 45 degrees. And this angle is 45 degrees. Now let's draw a line across here. So the x coordinate is going to be the distance between this point here and this point here. Well, we already know this distance right here is 0 0.5 feet. But how do we find this distance? Notice that this is a right triangle. And if this is 90 degrees and that's 45 degrees, then that means that this is 45 degrees. 
That means that this distance right here and this distance right here are the same number. Using trigonometry, the sine and cosine of 45 degrees are equal to the same number. So the sine of 45 is equal to 0 0.707 and the cosine of 45 is 0 0.707. So without going into the process of trigonometry and working through this, the equations and everything, I just want you to note that this distance going from this point to this point is going to be, uh, let's call this leg length, okay? And, and from, our, from our planning previously, we know that that is going to start out at 62.5 feet. So it will be, this distance from here to here is 0 0.707 times leg length by using trigonometry. So that gets us from the end of the antenna to this point directly underneath here. We have to add in this additional amount here. So the x, the x value here, because this is the negative x-axis over here, is going to be a minus 0 0.707 times the leg length plus half of this distance. So let's, let's call this source length. And we'll set that equal to one. So this distance here then is source length divided by two because half of it's on this side, half of it's on this side. So then this becomes source length over two. That's the X for this side. The X for this side is just simply exactly the same thing, only it's positive instead of negative. Well, what about the Z? We, we've gotten the X for both ends. What about the Z? Well, Z, again, this, both of these are the same value. This length here from here to here is going to be the 0 0.707 times the leg length But Z for this position is the distance between the ground down here and here. Well, if we know that this height here at the top is a value defined by the variable apex, which we will assign 65 because that's what we said in our planning, then <clears throat> So this is at apex or 65 and we know the distance between this top apex and where this is at is 0 0.707 times the leg length. Then we know that the Z position the here is going to be apex minus 0 0.707 times the leg length length and that will be the z position we'll call that z min for this z position and this z position they're both at the same place so this wire talking about from a z height perspective goes from 
this apex minus 0.707 times the leg length up to apex. We travel across here and then we go down from apex down to this same thing. From the x position, we go from negative 0.707 times the leg length plus the source length over 2. As we travel along here, we travel source length across here, and then from here to here, we travel another positive 0.707 times leg length plus the source length divided by 2. Inverted Vs are a little more complicated, but when you break it down into right triangles and see the different pieces and parts, setting them up is not an issue. You can just go ahead and do this. So we're going to use all of this in, uh, in entering the, the uh, simple inverted V into our 4NEC2 uh, modeling software. All right, now that we have completed our planning phase for modeling the simple inverted V, let's put it into the 4NEC2 antenna modeling software. So we're going to make sure our settings are right, our characteristic impedance is correct, we're going to open the editor, go to File, New. We're going to save this file as. And we're going to type simple inverted V. We're going to go over to Symbols. Make sure you're selecting Feet here. We're going to go to Frequency Ground. We have to change this to 3.75 megahertz. Real Ground, Pastoral Hills for my particular location that applies. And now we're going to create our symbols. Now the height of the antenna, the very top of an inverted V, it's like a it's like a, di a, a, a triangle. So we're going to call that apex. And that is set for 65 feet according to our planning. Next, we're going to define the leg length equal to 62.4 feet. We're going to create a source length is equal to one foot just like we were planning we're going to set now this is the beauty of your of your uh, symbols because now you can do calculation in the symbols and so x max is the the point furthest away from the antenna support and we're going to set that equal to zero 0.7071 times leg length plus source length divided by 2. See, now we don't have to hard code that in. All we do is change leg length and the X max that coordinate automatically will change for us. Looks like I got an extra one in here, so let's get rid of that. Next, we have Z min, which is equal to the apex minus 0 0.707 times leg length. So that Z min, and as before, wire rad equals 0 0.004 feet in diameter. 
Now we have all of our symbols put in. Now we can go to geometry. Now in geometry, we're going to be working from the minus X direction through to the plus X direction, uh, moving sequentially across the antenna from one end to the other. And so it begins with a wire and we're going to call it tag number one. We had just decided on 62 segments to the left. X is minus X max. Y is zero everywhere. Z is Z min. X2 is up at the very top. That's going to be minus source length over 2. Y2 is 0 everywhere. And Z2 is at the apex done. And then wire red. And so we're going to stick over here. Leg number 1. All right, let's go back over here. We'll put in our source, tag number two, number of segments one, and this would be minus source length over two. Y is zero. We're at the apex. We go to source length over 2, y is 0, apex, wire red, source here, back to the beginning, wire number 3, 62 segments, and now we're starting at the end where uh, we were at the end of the source before, the source piece of wire. So that would be source length over 2. Y is 0. Z1 is at the apex. X2 is now going to be X max Y2 is 0 and Z min wire rad leg number 2 all right we have all of our wires in place now let's put our source in we want a voltage source. Now if we go back here, wire 2 is where the source is supposed to be put. So that's wire 2. Segment 1, there's only one. One for the real. Zero for the imaginary. All right. Save. We are all ready to go. So we click on run NEC okay try again run NEC frequency sweep 3.5 to 4 generate and we sit back and watch it chunk away chunk a chunk a chunk a chunk a chunk a chunk a oh look at that and there is our antenna but you notice Again, here, look at this. Our resonant frequency is not at 3.75. So we would like to move that down to 3.75. So like before, you have to close the editor to use the optimizer. We're going to go up here, calculate, start optimizer. We're going to tell it to change the leg length because we've defined all of this in terms of these um, these symbols. We can do this, and the calculations are all done in the symbols. 
So now we're going to say, okay, adjust the length of the leg to give us the best SWR possible at 3.75 megahertz. And so it chunks away and we have 63.573. So watch this, I'm gonna do it this way this time. Update NEC file. You can save it under a new file name or you can save it as the original file. So I'm gonna save it under the original file and I'm going to exit here. I'm going to calculate and we'll do a frequency sweep. Let's see how it looks. And presto changeo, here we are at exactly 3.75. Well, that's pretty cool. Here's our geometry here. You can see the geometry of the antenna. You can come here and we can see the geometry here. Now we would like to see the radiation pattern. This is the 2D show info. Notice that the it has a lower number here, but here you see where it is. It's sitting just about straight up and down here. So let's take a look at the uh, radiation pattern. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. Far field pattern generate. Chunka, chunka, chunka. Let's look at the 3D representation and multicolor. And yep, it'd be a real cloud burner. Look at that, huh? It's still directional, left and right, but an awful lot of its energy is going straight up in the air. So there you have the simple inverted V, inverted v antenna as modeled in 4NEC2. So there you have it, how to model a simple dipole and a simple inverted V antenna using the 4NEC2 antenna modeling program. In the next video in this series, I will present my full band antenna virtual project for the 80 meter, that is the 3.5 megahertz to 4 megahertz amateur radio band. If you have found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified when new videos come out. Thank you so much for watching. Toodaloots.